Hey everyone, so in my stream yesterday, I talked about the problems from Educational Code Forces Round 112, and I gave some explanations for A through E, and then I talked through some ideas for F, uh, but they were fairly complicated, and so I talked about things, and so in particular, the main idea I was talking about used link cut trees to solve the problem. But I was looking through some other competitor solutions after the problem, or sorry, after the contest, and it turned out there's a much easier way to do this problem. And so I thought I'd record a video and explain it real quick. And credit for this idea goes to Heltian. He ended up in fourth in the contest yesterday. And um, most uh, and this idea was largely derived from spending a fair bit of time reading through his relatively concise implementation. So yeah, shout out to him. Um, but okay, let's talk through the idea. So in my video yet, or in my stream yesterday, which I recommend you watch if you haven't yet, because um, that's where you made a lot of the key observations for this problem, we essentially reduced the problem to a um, or to a couple of steps. So first, we're going to build the uh, a minimum spanning tree from the input edges because we proved that the any edge in the minimum spanning tree is definitely going to actually be added. And then what we need to do is we essentially need to maintain a list of edges that are contained in some cycle so that if the path from u to, uh, so if we're adding an edge u to v and the path from u to v already contains an edge used in the cycle, we're going to reject that edge. And then we also need to check whether the path from u to v has odd or even length because it's go if the cycle it's going to introduce has even length, then, um, then that's bad because the xor is going to be zero and not one as it's supposed to be. And then we and then assuming that both of those conditions are satisfied, we need to actually add a cycle u to v. Alright. So the first part here is pretty straightforward. It's a standard minimum spanning tree problem. But the rest of this is a little trickier. And but it turns out that all of this can be done just using a clever use of DFS. So first let's talk about how we're going to maintain what or how we're going to check whether the path has odd length. This is relatively straightforward. So, um, let's see, where do I have this code? Okay, so what I'm going to do is, as you'll see, I have a lot of arrays here that I maintain in my DFS. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain this array val, where or where um, val of i stores the length from um, i to the root of the tree containing i. And then what we can do is is the length from um, and then let's say that we're adding an edge from u to v such that um, l is or the such that the LCA of u and v is l. Then we know that the distance from u to v is equal to val of u plus val of v minus two times val of l. But since we just care about whether the distance is odd or even. This reduces to valid u plus valid v. Okay. So what that means is I have this val array, and then um, and then I'm going to XOR the val, val array since we are using XOR distance. Whenever we go into a new node, I'm going to have um, XOR a dot f is the um, element we're going to visit next, and a dot s is the distance of the edge, and so I'm going to DFS in. I guess I'll go actually start start explaining my code from the beginning just so you can see what the MST part is doing. So I read in x, y, and z. x and y are the endpoints, and z is the distance array. And then I store a Boolean array representing whether each edge is in the MST. And then I build the MST, pretty standard. I also maintain a list of queries that each node is a part of, and I'll explain why that's important in a moment. Um, and finally, I reset the DSU, which uh, again, I'll explain in a sec, I'll need it later. Okay, so then I'll skip ahead a bit, but what we can see is now if val of x, x or val of y, x or, x or the value of the edge that we're adding is 1, then our, um, then our cycle is going to have length 1, which is good. Okay, but now we need to check if the path from u to v contains any edges used in the cycle. And we're going to take advantage of the fact that <clears throat> each edge can only be added to a cycle once. So we're only going to need to add O of n things to the cycle. What we're going to do is we're going to maintain a segment tree. 
and we're going to want this segment tree to support range up or range updates or in particular range addition and then point queries and the idea is that seg of i stores the uh, number of edges on the path from i to its root that have been used in cycles and so um Normally when we need when we need range updates, we would need to use a lazy segment tree, but since we only want point queries, we can essentially make have our set use a regular segment tree and just have it make or and just like make it the um that's um and just make it the difference array. So in other words, if we or so in other words, um we might or in the first value is going to be like if we're um like it's basically going to be or to be of the form seg of zero, then seg of one minus seg of zero, then seg of two minus seg of one, and so on, such that a uh, at, or adding on the range l to r becomes adding at the point l and subtracting at the point r plus one, and then quer and then querying x becomes just querying the range 0 through x because the sum of zero through of positions 0 through x will be position x. All right, cool. And so then the idea is that if um if u contains no more or if the if the path to u contains no more um, used edges than the path to or to l and the path to V contains no more used edges than the path to L. Then no used edges are present on the path. And so, in other words, and so, um, in other words, in order to run, in order to maintain a seg tree over the nodes of the tree, we can run a, um, or we can run a um, pre-order traversal. And that's going to ensure that the time range corresponding to a given tree's, um, we're going to get a position for each node. And in my code, that's t in, time in, for each vertex. And the subtree of each node is going to, co or of each vertex is going to c correspond to a contiguous range of time. Um, and so, to, and so, essentially, we can do or we can just verify the query of zero to t time in of v is equal to query of zero and time in of l, and then the same thing for u. Okay. Now we are going to need to compute l, and to do that, I'm going to use the um, I will use Tarjan's offline LCA algorithm. Normally, I have I have a template that does online LCA. But um, Tarjans is nice because it works. It can be integrated directly into this DFS function, and it doesn't add an extra log factor to the complexity, which I guess wouldn't really matter here because we already have a log n factor from the segment tree. But it just it um, also simplifies the code significantly. All right, so I maintain and so I maintain T in, and then when I leave, and then when I leave a given vertex, I um, update T out, and that basically, and so then basically. The subtree of v corresponds to, um, or to the range. Open bracket t and a v close parentheses t out of v, meaning that t out of v is not included in this range. And the idea then is that when I add an ed the edge whose um, child is v, then what that's going to do is it's going to mean everything in the subtree of v now has a um, now has a, a new um, used edge going above it, and that means that I can add one to this or to this interval, and that will or on our seg tree, and that will keep it up to date. So I maintain t in and t out. Everything else, like all of this DSU stuff, is just part of the LCA algorithm. And then, um, so now I'll go through how I process each query. So first of all, if the query is in the tree, I just print yes, and then I continue. And then, so I check whether this part checks if the total length of the path is odd. This part checks whether t n and uh, or of l and t n of x are the same. And then this last part does the same for y. And if those all conditions all hold, then I say yes, we're adding this query. And so then the one thing I need to do is I need to update. And so 
essentially what I do is I iterate through the edges that are being added, um, noting that the the edge whose child so the edge whose child is x of i is going to be added, then the ch then the edge whose child is parent of x of i, then the edge whose child is the parent of x of i's parent, and so on until we're not going uh, until we're not going to add, um we're not going to add the edge whose parent is l because that edge isn't in the path. And so we essentially iterate until x is equal is not or until x is equal to l, we're going to update the range and then set x to be its parent. And then once x be reaches l, then we're done. We have no more edges on the path from l down to x. And if that uh, and then if the conditions aren't satisfied, we print no. So yeah, that's all there is to it. That leads to a significantly nicer implementation. Um, I think the moral of this story is not to get too caught up in uh, heavy machinery or especially not too intimidated by a problem in a way that leads you to um, jump to unnecessarily difficult solutions because um, the algorithms that we use here, I mean obviously they're not simple, but they're certainly nowhere near as convoluted as a link cut tree would have been. And um, in general, getting a, or, or killing off a problem like this with just a uh, DFS and then an LCA and then a segment tree is not really too bad for a problem of this level. So yeah, I think that's about all. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and otherwise I will see you next time.